This week, we have a good range of very clinically applicable studies. At the number three spot, we have a new simple risk score for pulmonary embolism. This is something that uh, we now apply risk stratification to where higher risk patients may benefit from thrombolysis or even surgical embolectomy. And so developing a risk score has been helpful. There's a more complicated score that performs well, but investigators in uh, the archives published a simple score that includes uh, six points with uh, age over 80, uh, cancer, a history of heart failure or COPD, um, heart rate over 110, blood pressure less than 100, uh, or oxygen saturation less than 90. And so counting up that score, one can predict mortality and then use that in deciding uh, on more aggressive treatment potentially. It needs to be validated prospectively, but a nice simple score that could be clinically useful. And having had three patients admitted to me yesterday with large pulmonary emboli, this will be very useful in trying to sort out how to manage these patients. Well, at the number two spot is a uh, big study, pun intended, on waist circumference when controlling for BMI. A study of a, over 100,000 patients looking at the contribution of waist circumference over and above BMI finding about a 15% uh, or 20% increase in the risk of death uh, for every four extra inches uh, in the waist circumference. This was particularly bad for people whose waist circumference were greater than 48 for men or 43 for women, but again, there was a graded response. And so attention uh, should be paid not only to weight, but also waist circumference, something obviously easy, easily measurable, uh, but a good discussion point, I would say, in the office with patients. And at the number one spot is a terrific new document by an ESC working group on acute cardiac care on the use of troponins. This is one of a series that they're developing on biomarkers, and uh, we on Cardiosource have a brand new biomarker um, website that has all the information uh, of the literature and um, hot topics. And Michael Contos is the editor of that page. Now, this new document uh, focuses on troponin and gives a lot of very practical advice on looking at the laboratory values and ha having clinicians talk with the lab to sort out, do you have a current up-to-date assay? But it also gives good advice on uh, how to use this. It has a list of the other diagnoses beyond acute MI that can lead to elevations in troponin and guides us as to where it can be helpful and the importance of looking for the rise and fall of troponin in order for it to be uh, more typical of myocardial infarction. And so a, a terrific new document to help use of this widely applied biomarker. I'm Chris Cannon with this week's CardiSource Video News.